Hey Peter, I recite this poem on a very unusual staircase uh, which leads up to the top of a tower where I intended to recite this poem but it started drizzling very slightly and I couldn't risk the damage to my property. I'm sorry also for taking so long to respond to your video, but I've been going through a bit of a personal crisis, wondering whether whether or not it's better to give up on poetry and focus on my attention on becoming a rock star, or indeed Dostoevsky. Anyway, this poem in many ways is a response to the uh, spiritual mood of your poem. Uh, and uh, many of the uh, YouTube videos giving spiritual life advice, which I have been uh, watching a la mode right now. I'm assuming a la mode means a lot. The only way to be happy is to be unhappy, and the only way to be unhappy is to be a genius. By Jerry Angeli. I am unhappy, my love. Give me a speedboat and I will drive it into the ocean till I stop weeping, which might be never, in which case I will discover America. The day I find something that don't make me cry, I will devote my whole life to studying and worshipping it. I could only believe in a God who ain't particularly interested in how I feel. The only way a human being is ever going to manage to leave the solar system is by convincing themselves they are doing something else, like winning a game of football. To place two feet on the furthest point in space from the womb in which those feet were formed ain't enough of an incentive in itself to do the thing, even if it happens to be easy. One almost must be sure of the ability to scream in your face in order to do anything. Even if it happens to be easy. Sorry, I read that already. Uh, <clears throat> I'm only on holiday, so home will be weird when I get back, which is also the reason I go on living life. I want to walk the familiar nostalgic streets of eternity, and for it all to seem deeply bizarre and fresh after so much foreign finitude, I hope some souls get to return to life a second time. I would hate for this to be my only trip. During my nap today, sorry, it's looking like a beautiful kind of weather now. I think the sun may have just may have just come out. I think I might have to recite the second half on the tower as planned. What a beautiful day. My, my. Can you believe it was raining only seconds ago? My, my. What a beautiful day. It's a little windy though. Maybe I'll crouch by this wall. Where was I? Talking about my nap. During my nap today, I dreamed I was working in a monastery in the year 31 31. Catholicism remained largely unchanged, only now it was called Blocko Catholicism, and everything was made out of blocks. Babies were baptized by clobbering over the head with a huge block. Instead of rosary, the devout fumbled with blocks. Instead of saints, they had these big blocks. <laughs> You had to put the prefix blocko in front of all names and non-proper nouns to avoid excommunication. Hail, blocko Mary, full of blocko grace. Blocko God, from, sorry, it's getting windy. Blocko God from blocko God. Blocko light from blocko light. Very blocko God of very block. Oh my God, what am I? Very, very blocko God of very blocko God. I mean, that's the only time anyone's common. <laughs> Doing the combination of those words and that action. For thine is the block o kingdom, the block o power, and the block o glory. Mass lasted about 25 minutes longer than usual. The symbol of Christianity was no longer a man on a cross, but a block mounted on a slightly larger block. Cruciform churches had been systematically demolished and replaced by big blocks. 
The precise theological justification for this block-based system of faith lay buried in the ancient past of the third millennium, but most scholars believed it was a response to claims that Catholicism, with its spiritual preoccupations, no longer had application in the material world of blocks and such. When I woke up at about 4 p.m., I was shocked and offended to hear someone use the name of Jesus, Sans Blanco. Good thing I restrained the urge to punch him, as it conspired there was holding a concealed bazooka. As you know, I only fear two things, death and taxes. When I get back to London, I vow to amaze everybody by the lengths of bodily and intellectual humiliation I am willing to undergo to avoid death and taxes. I want people to be unsure when they meet me, whether their time with me was a spiritual awakening or just some pointless nonsense. Let's eat more raw tomatoes as well. I've really got the taste for them.